All right, so uh, I've got my virtual device and my real device ready to go. I've got my work, my project, it's on my flash drive. Uh, if you're using last week's work, it's got last week's date, and you can change it to today's date if you'd like, or you can continue to use it as my SDCE. But in any event, you want to uh, make sure now you've got uh, command prompt in that project folder. So remember, you can shift right click the project folder to open command window. If we go to the start menu and load up the node command prompt, it's just about the same as doing it this way. Uh, and this is a faster way because then if you open node command prompt, you have to navigate to the folder, navigate to the flash drive, then the folder and the subfolder, etc. So shift right click, open command window takes you there pretty directly. So I just need to be inside the project. And most of the time nowadays, what we're doing is simply Cordova run Android or Cordova emulate Android and such. We haven't had to use many of the original Cordova commands because this is at the point of the project that we're in. We've got the structure. Now we just need to work on our app and test our app and so forth. But just to kind of shake off the cobwebs, does anyone remember, what's the command here for me to check what platforms do I have installed in my project? Anyone remember that? Perfect. Cordova platform. So let's just do that quickly. Cordova platform, which will remind you, these are the platforms that are installed on this particular project. There we go, Android 4.0.0 and browser 3.5.2. Now I bring this up because there's actually a newer version of the Android code 4.1.1. And if we wanted to uh, update our project to that level, we could. Now, what did I say, however, about updating our code in the middle of a project? It's not good. Not recommended. Even though there's a newer version of the Android code, I would not upgrade to it just because it's available. It may disrupt our workflow. Um, so we'll talk about updating the app when we get to perhaps version 2. We're far along on up along in our project that I don't feel like I, I need to do a lot of changes. I need to uh, wait perhaps until version 2 of the project. So these are the these are the platforms that I've got installed and what I want to do is add uh, I want to add uh, an extra feature of uh, user input. Uh, the built-in mechanism is a plain old HTML prompt attribute. Remember this? Let me pull, let's pull up the index file. Go ahead and open your project in Notepad++. I want to look at the code of the project. You can go to your project, www folder, and uh, we'll edit in Notepad the index file. And so currently our project is about 277 lines long, uh, which is pretty small by the standards of some uh, apps. They can e easily be, be thousands, if not tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands or more lines of code. So we've only got, uh, ours is a baby, 277 lines of code. Um, but let's say we want to quickly find the part in our code of the app where it asks for the user to add their name. Remember, we've got a way for it to add the person's name. So how do we find, how do we get to that the fastest? Search, yes? Search. So let's memorize Control F to find, or you can go up to the search menu, find. Let's find. What are we trying to find, actually? That's how we do it, but what are we looking for? Finding the thing we're looking for. Specifically, what are we looking for? There's a command that asks us for the user input. We can either search for the command, or do you remember perhaps any of the code that the user reads? Doesn't it ask you, like, please enter your name or something? Does anyone, maybe, does anyone remember what that was? 
in any event, we're just trying to find in our hundreds of lines of code the one place that I need to edit. And I kind of remember through the cobwebs that we have a command that was prompt. Prompt was the JavaScript command that we did last month to ask for the user's name. Now if I didn't remember that, I can perhaps try to remember, um, did I say, I think I might have said, what's your name? What's your name? Now if I simply search, if I try to search, what's your name? Oops, I'm not finding it. Okay, I didn't call it that, perhaps. Maybe I called it, what is your name? Didn't call it that either. Or you can just type name and keep searching, right? That's, yeah, exactly. I could type name. However, name might have been used in more than one way throughout my project. But I think in my project I have name? Question mark. I think I only have one place in my whole app asking you name. Oh, maybe not. Okay, prompt. Prompt it is. Wait a minute. Oh, I remember. Prompt was in our JavaScript, wasn't it? It wasn't yeah. going to show up here. Uh, okay, do we call it what? I think it's customization. Yeah, this is the thing. Um, some of that code is in the JavaScript, isn't it? Now that I think about it, the what's your name is in the JavaScript. So we have a button called customize. Um, looks like it might be this here. Customize. So line 261. So the point of that, I didn't do it on purpose. I thought I thought we had written it in the code here. But that's the point. We have a few hundred lines of code, and we haven't had to edit this in a while. But I wanted to get back to that code to maybe change it again. Um, and so that would require, I wouldn't scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll to find what I'm looking for. Eventually you're going to have so many lines of code that is going to be a waste of your time. You uh, should just get used to doing the find and doing a little detective work. I was kind of barking up the wrong tree searching for prompt because now I remember it's in the JavaScript, but then you guys remembered it was customized. So anyway, it's at about 200, line 261 is where I've got the button that lets us customize. And then this is reminding me then that I also need to pull up the JavaScript. Let's open now the Kodika JavaScript file. Kodika.extra.js. Let's open that in Notepad. This one is not hundreds of lines of code, so maybe we can scroll around a little bit, but uh, over on line 62-ish, line 62, 63, that's the one specifically uh, that makes the button active. We've got the button, customize, on click, run the function, get name. So get name is the function that retrieves the person's name. Here it is, line 47, local storage, that username equals prompt. There we go. So prompt is the JavaScript command that makes a simple pop-up that asks for the person's name specifically. What's your name? There it is there. It captures that name. The result of someone typing the name and clicking OK is a name. That name then is stored in local storage.username. This quote unquote permanent variable. Username is the is the local storage object. Local storage is the command or the docu uh, the object. Uh, username is the method. So we've stored the person's name permanently within our app. What I want to see is, is there a way to get a better version of this prompt than the build, than the native, I mean, than the, uh, than the web version of it? So I was waiting for my emulation to load up, and it's ready. But I found my code, and to remind us how it works, from the home screen, I go to about customize there we go what's your name that pop-up right there comes from when the project was a web only project that was a plain old JavaScript alert box 
which doesn't feel native. It doesn't feel like an Android pop-up box. Or if it was on iPhone, it wouldn't feel like an iPhone pop-up box. Or on Windows Phone or Blackberry or whatever, it looks like a generic JavaScript pop-up. I want to see, can I use Cordova? Can I use Cordova to create a pop-up that feels more native, that really fits in the style of the Android aesthetic, and still accomplish the same thing? So in order to answer that question, we need to go over to the documentation. We need to go back to the documentation to read about user input. We have already the very basic alert box. Remember this? It's just kind of proof of concept. It doesn't really do anything. We've got alert. That's a native pop-up. It has the font of Android. It has the particular design and rounded corners and the colors and the aesthetic and everything. I want something more like that rather than the plain JavaScript pop-up. So let's go back to the documentation, which is at where? What website? Cordova.apache.org. Cordova.apache.org. And then we will look at the documentation. Click the documentation link at the top. Might be a little bit slow because we're all trying to access it, so just uh, wait a moment. All right, so when Cordova loads up, you then want to go to documentation. And most of the time, as I said previously, we're going to be spending our time on one particular chapter of the documentation. Does anyone remember which one it is? Plugins. plugins. So over here on the chapters, let's go down to plugins. And the one we want is related to the dialogues plugin. So from the list here, let's go look at the documentation of dialogs, visual device notifications. As that loads up, I recall that there were a few types of dialog boxes, a basic alert, and a few others. Here we go. Alert, confirm, prompt, and beep. Remember, beep makes a sound, alert makes a basic pop-up. Let's see what confirm and prompt do. Let's see, so we've got a section, navigator.notification.alert. That was the plain old alert box. Navigator.notification.confirm. Displays a customizable confirmation dialog box. That needs a message, a callback, optional title, and optional button labels. Method, callback, callback to invoke with index of button pressed, title, button labels. That one seems to make it sound like we can use more than one button. Array of strings specifying buttons. So we can have an OK button, a cancel button. OK, doesn't seem to be exactly what I want. This is just going to make a pop-up happen. For example, code here, it's going to pop up. You are the winner. The title will say game over, and we have the option of restart or exit. So we have two possible buttons we can use there. Then we've got uh, navigator.notification.prompt displays a native dialog box that is more customizable than the browser's prompt function. Hey, that's what we want. We used prompt in JavaScript, but this is going to be more customizable, and it's similar to that. So what do we have? We've got a message, prompt callback, optional title, optional buttons, and optional default text. So the message, which is required, it's plain old string text, prompt callback, to invoke with index of buttons pressed, one, two, or three, so I can have one, two, or three buttons on the screen. 
depending on which button is pressed, then something can happen. Um, title, dialog, button labels, array of strings, again, OK or cancel, default text, default text, input value. For example, an, a pop-up box will appear and it'll have a little box for someone to write something, but it might have already built-in text to prompt the user how to write something. Maybe we're asking for a phone number, so the default text could be in the format, you know, 619-555-123. It'll tell the user, write your, write your phone number this way. So default text to help them fill it in. The callback executes when you press one of the buttons. The results object passed to the callback contains the following, a button index, the index of the button, which is a number. Note that the index uses one-based indexing. Uh, so we're often used to referring to numbers in code starting with 0. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. But for some reason, this starts with a 1. It's kind of odd. But we just need to make sure that when we have to deal with a particular button, is it button 1, button 2, button 3? Whereas usually, is it button 0, button 1, or button 2? But here, it's 1, 2, or 3. And then you get input, the text entered, in the prompt. Okay, so basically in our code, in our JavaScript code, Line 50, we're going, to we're going to update line 50 to be something more like the example here. I want to actually copy line 50 and paste it. I want to copy line 50 and paste it below itself so that I can keep a copy of line 50 in case I still want to perhaps use it for some reason. So copy line 50 into line 51 and then comment line 50. Okay, so um, this is going to work a little bit differently from the existing code. Um, but it looks like Okay, we're not, uh, it looks like we're not actually going to use the copy. So, never mind, let's delete that copy of line 50. It needs to be done differently, apparently, by the way this is, uh, this is saying. So, let's, uh, from the example, let's copy... The block of code that says navigator.notification.prompt let's copy that whole little chunk not the function yet but just uh, the navigator.notification prompt don't forget the final closing parentheses parenthesis go ahead and copy that 
and we'll place it into line 51 of our code. So you see we're still using the getName function. When someone presses the button, it's still going to use getName, and then it's going to invoke the native um, prompt. And at the moment it'll say, please enter your name. Uh, the title on top of the box will say registration, and there will be either the button OK or exit. The default text that will appear in that box will say Jane Doe. So it'll give users an example of what they can write. Jane Doe. The result of this prompt then gets pushed to the onPrompt function, which is up here. Create a function called onPrompt. And what we put into onPrompt are the results that come from using prompt. In the example, then, we just see a simple alert that says you selected button number, and it says results dot button index. This is what this says at the top here. Each button has, a, has an index, has a number assigned to it, one, two, or three. We can have up to three buttons. We can have OK, cancel, or something else. And so here it's just displaying you clicked on button number one, button index. And then it also says, and entered, results.input1. There's one input, one input box where the person types in their name, and the alert box is going to pop up and show that name. So we need to do it slightly different. And I think what we'll do is, I think we'll be OK to after the function of get name, so get name goes from 47 to 60. After that, so line 62, let's define function on prompt. We're going to explain, okay, what does on prompt do? And the example shows we're passing in results, so we should also have a value here, results. These are the results that are coming from the prompt. So this basically gives us a name. Now we need to save the name like we did on line 50. So we'll start writing local storage dot username equals. That's the same as before. We're going to save the person's name in local storage, which is kind of like permanent variables, kind of like cookies. And that's based on what the person typed into the box. So it's results dot input one. And that's all coming from the documentation, from the example. It's just built in. Whenever prompt, whenever notification dot prompt is used, it gives you two results: which button they clicked on, and what did they type. And what did they type is inside of this input one. And that's an object of results. Next line, press enter. Let's, uh, let's copy line 59 into line 63, because line 59 was what was showing that name throughout our app. Copy line 59 to 64. Now this on prompt takes care of showing the person's name in the app. So therefore we can comment it out to deactivate it on line 59. We were using the previous function get name to get the name, save the name, and display the name. 
Now we need to use on prompt to save the name. The get name gets the name, but on prompt saves the name and then displays the name. So I think at the moment that's all we need. Um, let's save that and run it in your virtual or real device. Let's see how that works. Let me just start my code running here and I'll zoom back in in one moment. Let's see. So the whole point of that is it worked before, but the point of this is I want it to feel more like a real app, not like a web app, which is what prompt was, the old prompt. But now with navigator.prompt, now it should feel like a native app. It should feel like an iPhone app, like an Android app, like a Windows app, because it'll display the native dialog box. Needed a little bit more setup than afterwards. We'll see if it worked. Need a little bit more setup, but now the payoff is that it'll feel more native. Let's see how that works. Any questions so far on the logic of it? We'll see if our code works in a moment, but does it make sense? Okay, let's see here. Mine loaded up. I go to the About. That's the same. I've got the Customize button, and I click it. Look at that. A box that looks a little bit more Android-like. There's the text at the top, Registration, which I can change. Enter your name, which I can change. And a placeholder text, Jane Doe. And as a person starts to type in their name, the placeholder text goes away. Now I've got Exit, which I should rename, and I've got OK. So if I click OK, it closes like before, and if I go back, if you close the dialog box, there's my name. Jane. So if it worked, it should. Um, work like before, just a little different, a little better. Um, anyone need a little help? Someone miss anything? Just one moment.
because of that. Yeah, I mean, um, this is the same thing goes on that. And then they were on that. So there's a security problem on that. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a uh, default.
Well, we're not going to find anywhere in our code this is input one. That's just something it's that just the specification says you have to do this. Oh, it's just the hard test not done on the token. Oh, that means colon. You, you put a colon at the very end instead of a semicolon. Oh, is that a colon there? Yeah. Yeah. Probably did it because of colon. Yeah, yeah. The uh, key value pair went inside. Where's its value? I mean, where's its, where's its value? Here's the key. Well, that also helped. That I also as a developer tool was kind of guiding me because it said I'm going to strike the token colon. Colon's got a colon. It should be, not before it should be exactly. It should make it more obvious that it's like this is the unexpected token. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Thanks. I don't know why this is very wrong. Okay, this is very wrong. Um, if we had any, if we had any, like a little yellow one, then it would be. I did, but it, but. Do you want to do something? Call this back. 
The card would sound so different and it would just like get the name. What are we what are we trying to do? I'm just trying to solve this. See, he's always had to cry me. I think it should just say welcome to the big chrome line. Because it has a picture of What do you do? Let's see what I'm going to do. And never mind, let's see what comes up.
All right, everyone. So if you got it to work, very good. Uh, your your uh, dialog box now has been upgraded to have a little bit more of a native feel. And as I see people's devices, I see that in action. It's kind of cool. Here on the generic stock Android, it's still kind of a little plain-ish, but we've got the two buttons. And then on a few people's, I've seen that you've got your own customization going on, and I see it in your native box as well. So that's the whole point of this, so that it looks like, so that it feels like it's part of the original app, not a little web pop-up. So we'll take a look, and then we'll take a break about how else can we customize it, and what else can we do with this. So it should be pretty obvious as we look at lines 51 to 57. We should see that we've got the box, the part of the box that asks, please enter your name. Right? Please enter your name. And then we've got uh, registration at the top. And then OK, exit. And then the placeholder name. So you can change this to however you want. Um, this is pretty appropriate language, I would say, but I kind of don't like that it says registration. It kind of maybe makes it think, uh, makes it makes me think that it's going to do much more than it really does, perhaps. Um, so I'm just going to change line 54. Instead of it saying registration, it will just say customize. So now at the top it'll say customize. And then we've got OK and we've got exit. Uh, I kind of don't like exit. What could be better than exit? Return or cancel. Um, so when someone chooses to customize it, I click OK. If they say, never mind, I don't want to customize it, we can do Cancel. So it'll still say Jane Doe, but let's just say, let's prompt them a little bit more. Maybe we just want a first name. We well, can type whatever they want. Uh, but we're just going to set it up so that it's just the first name. The point of that is 
the default text. It'll guide people. Type something like this. If we had written Jane Doe, it'll probably prompt people to write Victor Campos. But I only really want it to show Victor, because if it's too long of a name, it's going to perhaps display too much on screen, or it'll get cut off. So just with a first name will be OK. The documentation tells us that we can have up to three buttons. If I go back to look at Cordova, button index, um, I was taking a peek down here under Android quirks. Android supports a maximum of three buttons and ignores any more than that. In Android 3, buttons are displayed in reverse order for devices that use hollow theme. Um, so that's just something that they're going to be they're going to be in reverse order. I see OK and I see cancel written in my code, but when it popped up here, it was cancel and then OK. Just something to be aware of. For some reason, if we write it in one direction, OK, then exit, it's going to display it. Exit, then OK. Which is kind of weird. It's just the way it is. So if we want OK on the left, which seems more logical, just close them? Yeah, if we want it like that, just switch them. So I'm going to put cancel and then OK. I'm going to try something really weird. Let's see if this works. So I made a little change. I want to update my code, so I'm going to emulate it again. And um, that's a good point. I want OK on the left, cancel on the right. So you can switch the order here. Um, and that will display it like that. Uh, I want to load this up to see if this emoji icon will show up. Probably not. Uh, but I'm sure we can really get it to work if we do other things. Um, I don't I think emoji is not part of the UTF character set UTF8 remember our whole project on the index file is using UTF8 uh, emoji the cool little the new language of the web I don't believe it's part of the UTF8 character set I believe it's UTF16 uh, so if you know what I'm saying don't worry about it just yet but I want to see if I want to see how it updates. Because I changed a few things, didn't I? I changed the text, customized it a little bit more. Again, with a starting point, the um, Cordova starting point uh, gets me started pretty well, and then I can customize it. Question? Um, this isn't super relevant, but um, is there a difference between emojis and emoticons? Yeah, uh, emoji are the specific set of like the 200 defined faces and such, and emoticons or emoticons are just anything that's a little representation. Okay. Yeah. So, like, let's say if it's like um, an animated, like, crying face, then that would technically be an emoji, or... Um, I don't know, I was just confused. I read the article the other day about the emojis, and I was kind of lost as to whether if they were using emoticon or emoji it's sort of like uh, one is generic and one is specific. All of these on this website here, getemoji.com, these are emoji. These are specifically defined that these are the ones, you know, this little character right here means a certain emotion. But all of them collectively are emoticons. Even these ones right here that are like uh, a bikini. You know, that's not an emotion, but it's an emoji. It's not an emoticon, but it's an emoji. And the terms can kind of be interchangeable, but really the ones that are these ones nowadays, these are emoji. Traditionally and classically, an emoticon, emo emoticon was this, that, yeah. or you know, that. This one's mad right here. So that one would be, uh, and then even these right here that are like these kinds of characters. Those are also 
emoticons. But these right here are a specific standard defined, you know, this little dancing character. It has a specific character code, and then this part of set of 200 icons, it's an emoji. So I, what I tried to do, I went to this website, I copied one of these emoji, I put it into my code, which Notepad++ didn't recognize, but then when I ran it in the emulator, it did display it. So that's kind of interesting. So instead of having words, I can have symbols, which is pretty valuable, especially if you're doing internationalization. If you've got the word exit, it really only makes sense in English, but if you've got an icon of a little man running out a door, that makes sense in almost every language. But anyway, it says customize, please enter your name, there's the placeholder. Click the, click the OK button, which is now on the left, if you notice, because we put it backwards, it's on the left. Click OK, and now James. On your real device or virtual device? Okay, we're going to do a break soon and uh, I'll check it. Um, so if you got your code to work, that's good. Let's um, take a break. You can customize this how you want. There's a little customization here that you can do. And now we've got this native pop-up box, thanks to Cordova. And again, it will then look the right way per platform. And that's part of the, the coolness of Cordova. It takes your generic code, JavaScript, and then makes it specific to the platform. It's 7.15, we'll take a break until 7.25, and we'll go on. <laughs>